So, if you've ever set up a home lab, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? It's a journey that starts with this beautiful dream of perfect, clean organization. And it almost always ends, well, it ends with a monster. Today, we're going to talk about that glorious chaos, the spaghetti monster of home labs. Oh, you remember this moment. That fresh Proxmox install is just humming along. You log in, and the dashboard is this beautiful sea of green checks. Every VM, every container, it's all named perfectly, sitting right where it should be. You lean back and think, yep, I am basically a digital god. This is perfect. But let's be real. That feeling, it doesn't last. A few weeks go by, maybe a couple months. You add a little service here, a temporary test VM there, and then one day you look at your dashboard and you just don't even recognize it anymore. And there it is, the spaghetti monster. Your once pristine, organized system has become this tangled web of mystery containers, cloned VMs with weird names, and services you barely even remember installing. If this sounds painfully familiar, trust me, you are not alone. This is so common, we can actually give it a name, home lab syndrome. But here's the thing, and this is important, this isn't a sign you failed, not at all. It's a rite of passage. It's just the natural result of learning and tinkering and that, you know, that unchecked enthusiasm that makes us install a new game server just to see if it works. So why does this happen to pretty much everyone? It's not really about having bad hardware or dealing with buggy software. Nope, it's about a few very human habits that just have a knack for turning our digital gardens into total digital jungles. Let's break down exactly what's going on. We can pretty much boil it down to what I like to call the four horsemen of home lab chaos. These four things, time and time again, are what lead us down that tangled path to the spaghetti monster. Let's take a look at each one. First up, lack of documentation. Oof, this one hits home for a lot of us, doesn't it? When you're in the zone, spinning up a new container, the last thing you want to do is stop and write down its IP address and what it's for. It feels like such a waste of time, but future you, the one trying to figure out why the network is down at 2 in the morning? Yeah, future you will really, really wish you had. And look, the fix doesn't have to be some huge, complicated thing. We're talking about really straightforward tools. You can use Proxmox's own notes section for each VM. You can spin up a simple wiki like Bookstack. Heck, you can even just keep a folder of text files. The tool itself doesn't matter nearly as much as just getting into the habit. All right, horseman number two. Too many roles, not enough boundaries. We've all done it. We create that one super VM that does everything. It's our DNS server, our file share, a game server, and probably three other random things. It feels so efficient. Until, of course, one of those services breaks and takes your entire network down with it. The solution? It's simple. One service, one container. It keeps things clean, isolated, and just so much easier to troubleshoot. Our third horseman is not having an infrastructure as code mindset. Now I know, that sounds super intimidating, but the idea is actually really simple. Instead of clicking through a web interface or SSHing into a machine to set things up by hand, you write a recipe for your setup. Tools like Ansible or Terraform let you define exactly how a server should be configured, all in a simple text file. And the payoff for this? Oh, it is huge. One sysadmin I read about said they hadn't actually SSHed into one of their core VMs in ages. Why? because every single package, every little configuration is all defined in their code. If a server dies, they don't waste time debugging it, they just delete it and run the recipe again. Now that is power. In the final horseman, backups that never die. You take backups all the time, which is great, you should, but you never delete the old ones. And before you know it, you're wondering where all your storage went and it turns out 95% of your disk space is just gone eaten alive by snapshots from six months ago for a temporary VM you totally forgot you even made. Okay, so we've diagnosed the problem, we've met the four horsemen, now how do we actually fight back? How do we tame this digital chaos and find our way back to a clean, organized, and most importantly, reliable home lab? Well, the good news is the path forward is a lot clearer than you might think. What's kind of amazing is how straightforward the solutions are. For every single horseman, there's a direct counter move. Got no documentation? Start a wiki. Too many roles in one VM? One service per container. Doing everything manually? Learn some basic Ansible. Backup seating your disk? Just go turn on the retention settings that are already built right into Proxmox. And the best part is, you don't have to nuke your entire setup and start from scratch. You can start with these small, totally manageable changes that have a huge impact. 
Start using a clear naming convention. Use the new tags feature in Proxmox to organize things. Heck, one person had a dedicated container that does absolutely nothing but host the wiki for the rest of the server. I mean, that's brilliant. So let's just zoom out for a second. We've talked about the mess and how to fix it, but I really want to end by reframing this whole problem. Because that digital spaghetti monster living in your server rack, it is not something to be ashamed of at all. This is the key takeaway right here. A messy lab is a used lab. It's a lab where you've tried stuff, you've broken stuff, and you've learned stuff. A pristine, untouched dashboard is just a sign of a lab that isn't really doing much of anything. Your chaos is proof of your curiosity. Think about it. You know that feeling of dread you get when you have to reboot your main server? That little bit of anxiety? That is your system screaming at you that it's time to level up. The mess you've made is in the end of the story. It's the motivation for the next chapter. The one where you rebuild, but this time, you build smarter. Your home lab is a direct reflection of your learning journey. It's messy, it's chaotic, and it's always evolving, just like your own skills. That spaghetti monster isn't a problem to be solved, it's a milestone to be celebrated. So the only real question left is, what's it gonna motivate you to learn next?